This podcast is rated S for spoilers. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the Half Pass Podcast. This is episode 85, the movie review of Ad Astra. I'm Brad uh, Ricks, and here with me is a friend of mine who seems to have a problem with this movie, Ian Jones. I am in a special <laughs> kind of mood today. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've got my Coke, Sierra Coke with Christina bottle. Yeah, nice. Right there. So, you Just know. Random Christina. You know, Christina and I were such good friends and everything. We share... Nice. <laughs> We share, we drink out of the same bottle. I think that's really oh. what Coke is trying to get you to do, is to just swap spit with some random person. Oh, jeez. That's their whole thing, right? <laughs> You're out of control. Jones. I am, so this will be interesting. It's, it'll be really interesting. You're definitely in a yeah. special kind of mood. It's going to be one of those podcasts. I'm feisty. So, Let's do it. So... <laughs> I got a text last night. So in the previous podcast, we were talking about Uh how we were going to see if Ad Astor was worthwhile or not to actually do a podcast on because it's kind of like a drama. You just like whatever. Uh And so I got a text last night at like eight, like eight o'clock. It was like quarter after 8 p.m. And you're just like, so we're doing this one. Are we doing Ad Astra? And I was like, well, is it good enough to do? I don't know. He's just like, well, I want to rip it to shreds. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> so I guess I have to go see it. He's just like, I spent $31 on yep. this movie. You better go and watch that let movie me, so that we can yes, do Yes, <laughs> let, let me just, to give you the setting, Annie and I, okay, so during the movie, I looked at Annie and I said, I am so sorry. I will make this up to you. Okay. Like, like twice I was like, you know, I'm really hungry. Let's just go get something to eat. And she's like, no, we have to see this through. And, and uh. so it was so bad that I took her to a hibachi restaurant to make up for it. Ice. So the thing is, she looked at me like she was going to stab a fork in my eye when I said, well, Graham hasn't even seen it yet. And she was like, are, are you kidding me? You dragged me to that movie, so I was like, no, 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 we're going to do the podcast. I'm texting him right now. (laughs) (laughs) I've got plenty of ammo, so let's do it. So, I went went to the theater. I was like, okay, because it was a very serious sounding text. You better go watch this movie. I spent 30, I was like, okay, all right. (laughs) So, I went to go see it, so I went to like a 9.35 show. Wow, thank you. And and so I saw it last night, and this is by far one of the worst movies you could possibly watch at like 9.30 at night after a long day. (laughs) It is... It, it's like, I remember when I was, like, watching this, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, geez, Ian, like, I, I wish he hadn't seen this movie because I'm, like, <laughs> I, I'm trying my best to keep my eyes yeah. open. Yep. It's really rough. It's yeah. really rough because this movie is very slow. It is one of the slowest movies I have ever seen. It, it, it It's like... It's not quite Dune level, but it's up there. It, you're just like, man, this is a slow movie, yeah. and uh, you gotta be, you gotta be awake. This is one of those movies I feel like they shouldn't have late night showings of. No, uh-uh. <laughs> nope. It was rough, man. So we're gonna just go ahead and get into this conversation. Yeah. So let's just set the setting of this movie. So. The synopsis for this movie is astronaut Roy McBride undertakes a mission across an unforgiving solar system to uncover the truth about his missing father and his doomed expedition that now, 30 years later, threatens the universe. So that's the synopsis of this movie. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Yep. Which sounds exciting, right? Which sounds sounds very exciting. Totally misleading. Totally misleading. It's pretty misleading. Um, This movie was directed by James Gray, who did We Own the Night and uh, The Lost City of Z. 
uh, which I haven't seen any of those movies, but after watching this movie, I kind of want to go see some of this guy's other movies. I want to see how, if his directing style is the same, or is it just this movie? <laughs> you uh, mean, can, can he bore you two other times? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> Is that, did he make two other giant ASMR big ass budget uh, films? <laughs> no, this you will know, put you to sleep. Brad Pitt's monotone voice is the perfect oh, thing man. to listen to for two and a there half hours. Go. <laughs> <laughs> as he puts you to sleep, I trying think to this sound is intelligent. So funny. <laughs> so, so when I watched this movie, and I, I watched it with Jackie, so I dragged her to see this movie. Oh, too. good. <laughs> good. I'm sorry, Jackie. So, <laughs> so one of the things that she like could not stand is, first of all, she fundamentally has a problem with movies with voiceovers because you have they have to be really good in order for like you to push a story through VO. So with that said, she's like, but the other problem is, is Brad Pitt has such a monotone, like, gravelly voice. And it's like, so some of the voiceover is like, you don't hear what he's saying because he's kind of mumbling the whole time because that's how Brad Pitt talks. He's putting you to sleep. So you're just like, oh my god. I love how we got into one of my courts just just when trying to get through the freaking oh, intro man. to this movie. Yeah. So with that said, they have uh it's starring Brad Pitt, as we said, as Roy McBride. And his father is played by Tommy Lee Jones, which I guess is nice to see Tommy Lee Jones in something. Yeah, again. my uncle. Um, my uncle Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> yeah. Freaking in. It, I haven't seen him in such a long time. I can't even remember the last movie that I've seen him in. And unfortunately, the first thing that comes to my mind is Batman Forever, which is really unfortunate for Tommy Lee Jones. That's unfair. Um, wow. Fugitive. There we go. That, yeah, see? Fugitive. That? Uh, okay, didn't, there we go. I didn't shoot my wife. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Man, that got spoofed so much during, during like, the 90s. It yeah, was great. It uh, the only other couple other characters that I'm even going to mention in this movie is Ruth Nega as Helen Lantos, who has, like, she's, like, in the scene for, like, she's in the movie for, like, a little bit, and, and that's it, and you kind of don't know what the hell happens with her. And then you have Donald Sutherland as Thomas Pruitt. So that's all I'm going to discuss right. because 95% of this movie is just Brad Pitt. Yeah. Right? Yep. Like, yeah. It, it's it's basically just Brad Pitt. There are characters around him, but unfortunately, everything everybody seems to either go crazy or die around it's him. The, so, the other, like, there really yeah. is. Yep. Yeah. Go. go the ahead. other characters are inconsequential, right? I mean, yeah, they, 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 they don't <laughs> matter because the whole thing is just about his character, which may as well have been named Brad Pitt. Because I can't tell you the guy's name. You just said it. I know they were calling him Major. <laughs> I can't tell you the main character's name. Uh, unbelievable. Sorry, there's, there's going to be a huge mic slap on my nice. feet, but whatever. You know. Thanks for that. <laughs> oh. uh, so, it's it, the entire movie is, is just him, and that's fine. We've watched plenty of very good movies with just one, one character, character being the main thing, yeah. which... It's it's usually Tom Hanks who's who's a better actor, <laughs> but right, yeah. that's usually what happens when you have a movie the entire thing. But even when you think of watching The Martian with Matt Damon, like that one is like be- a better movie also, and it's it's just like the it's just like the worst thing. It's really rough. So I have a question for you, Joe. Oh, do you want to just continue? Do you want to just go into Quark's election? Yeah. Do you want to take a break? No, no, no. Calm down real quick. No, you just you just gotta go through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You want to just go through? That's right. I'm gonna eat this almond and let's do it. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and just get right into it then. So Quark's election section. This is gonna be. This is what happens when you have a movie that's kind of unfortunate we end up going blitzing right through it and it cuts the time down That's okay. <laughs> so the first thing i have is and this is the thing that is a quirk of mine and not necessarily something i don't like but it's it's rough in this movie 
and that's the it's it is so slow this mm. movie is easily one of the slowest movies i've ever seen and it's filmed that way too now on a certain level i like the filming because it has this it, it feels like every single thing is in space and in and on the moon even when he's not on the moon everything's really slow the scenes are long and drawn out there's so much slow motion like everything in this movie is has this slow feel to it including the actions because they put scenes in slow motion even when they don't necessarily need to be so i mean that happens when he's on earth it happens when he's on mars and it's just like well even though these planets are similar like you don't get this weird like moon slowness that you do on them but they have it filmed that way through the whole movie and so I kind of like that. So it's also one of my likes, but it really makes this movie difficult when it's so slow and there's nothing else for you to latch onto in this movie. There just isn't. There's nothing. There's like Brad Pitt's character. It's it's not Brad Pitt's performance. His performance is, I think, is good. But the character is awful. Like it, it's like a really boring character. Yeah. One of the reasons why his character is even doing this mission is because he's unusually calm all the time. Right. And so what ends up happening is you have a character that you just don't even really want to root for. He, you, like he has no layers. Any yeah, sort of. No depth yeah, he has no him. layers. There's no depth to him whatsoever. And to have a character that basically has a father that abandoned him. And for him to not have anything connected to that whatsoever is so strange to me. You get two scenes in this movie. You get the one scene when he's on Mars and he's first sending the message. And when he sends the message, he gives this very cold reading of of what he's supposed to say to his father to try to appeal to him somehow. Yeah. And it's like the coldest reading I've ever, I'm just like, it, it's just, it's just like a calm, cold reading and there's nothing important about it whatsoever. And then they do that for several days and then eventually he actually says something that's more emotional. And then everybody loses their shit when he does that. Yeah. Like everybody is like, everybody's just like, you're not, you can't continue on this mission. But his reaction was like, so calm anyway. Like he definitely freaked out a little bit. Right. But even then, it was like, it was still not, like, crazy emotional. It's not like he threw a chair or something. No. <laughs> he was just kind of, he was just kind of upset about the whole situation. Yeah, he didn't fight his way out of there. You know? No. I mean, so, yeah. It was very just, measured for him being emotional for the first time in the movie. It was a very measured yes. response. Like, it was very human- response yes it was it was very measured very human and i and it and it bothered me because i was like okay maybe we'll get the emotional climax when he actually sees his father face to face and then that doesn't happen either so when you when he gets there he still has a very measured calm reaction to seeing his father for the first time in 30 years, 30 years. and he's just and he's just kind of like well, whatever. He, he's just, he just, like, doesn't care whatsoever. It, it's, it's like, how do you not get... How did you get this response on Mars? And then when he gets there, after going on this, like, ridiculous journey of him getting back onto the spaceship, <laughs> where he goes through, what, the thrusters? And then, like, climbs his way through? And then, essentially, gets back inside? He... he, he he does all these things and you're just like, well, what the, why didn't I get any reaction to this whatsoever? I, there was nothing from him discovering his father. And I don't, I just didn't understand why he had the reaction in Mars. And then when he actually meets his father, he's still just dead inside. Yeah. There's nothing else there. And, and it bothers me. It bothers the hell out of me. I was just like, what the hell is going on? You know, so, especially because his dad was the reason why he got into space. Yes. Right? And then you find out that they really did not have any good kind of relationship whatsoever. No. But I think that's a relatable thing that they don't ever that they don't ever touch on. I mean no, they don't address like it. like there are elements here to where you could have 
done some things to make the character to like the main character and boy do you need to you know i mean you you touched on it boy do you have to do that when there's just one character even if even if the star is supposed to be an asshole he's got to be a, you know there has to be some redeeming quality and i just i, I just never saw that i i never got any kind of pay any kind of payoff no. from sticking to the end of this movie which i've only ever nope. walked out of one movie and had it not been for annie i would have walked out of this one too and we wouldn't <laughs> be having this discussion but it's gonna be a fun podcast i think the thing so. the thing is the thing is that again that's one of my other quirks is i when watching this movie you what is the takeaway there is nothing at all in this movie that you hold on to that you gain or anything nothing's i feel like nothing's really learned and it bothers the hell out of me because you watch this really long and slow moving movie and then you have this time period where it's like well, what what did I watch this for? So, like, what when, when I walked out of the theater, I legitimately was like, I don't know what I just watched. I have no idea why I was on this mission with this guy and what was the takeaway. Now, to touch on, again, what you were talking about, how there's elements in this movie that would work, is it makes a whole hell of a lot of sense that if he reacts to his father and basically having him because he also has issues in his own personal relationships because you have Liv Tyler who has like one line where she's like breaking up with him yeah. but you just have scenes of Liv Tyler in there which I assume is supposed to be his wife and you don't really you don't get something where he's like well I need to be a better father or a husband than mine was because if that was the if that was the takeaway i'd be okay with this movie a little bit more because his father's terrible like by the time once you get there you find out his father really just didn't care about him or his wife yeah right and and he was just kind of like screw screw everything like he didn't care at all and he also killed a bunch of people. Yeah. So, I mean, it, I mean, he's just terrible anyway. So, like, it makes so much more sense that if he had some sort of reaction to where he kind of finds this information out and then he's just like, well, I can be better than this. Like, this, this guy is obviously horrible and everything about him is terrible. And have them have, like, maybe a little scuffle, and then the ending's exactly the same. You have a scuffle, and instead of him doing that, he kind of just pushes him off into space, you know? <laughs> instead of this, like, weird release him into space thing, just have a little scuffle, and just have him release him off into space, and be like, well, it's it's done. And then that's him trying to essentially recover from basically being abandoned for 30 years, is him releasing his father, just being like, okay. And then you have him looking back at something that was bright, where he was just like, well, what's the point? You, you have that voiceover again, where he goes like, what's the point? Why do I, what do I need to do to continue? He looks over at something that's very bright, and I, and I don't know what that's supposed to be. The only thing I can think of is he was looking back towards Earth, so that he was thinking, oh, well that's why I'm here and I need to get back to my wife. And it would make so much sense if he had a kid because there's no representation that he necessarily has a father so or has a kid. Yeah. So it does, there's no representation that he's a father, but that's the point. Like if you would have had that as a part of the story where he's a father also and he realized that he needs to be better because he's doing the same mistakes his father is. Right. He's, he's leaving them for months at a time all the time and it's to the point where Liv Tyler when she breaks up with her she's like she feels lonely she feels like she's alone all the time because she is but you don't get that as a storyline that's not in there at all but if you did that that would make you care more about Brad Pitt especially if you had him like looking at photos of his wife I mean like the standard fare that we see in these kind of freaking movies all the time it's like not in it at all no that helps build this story. 
you could do a story in a different way that's more creative, which is what I feel like this movie's trying to do, but, like, it falls flat on, like, everything. I agree. Ugh. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. It's, it's so bizarre, man. It is, it's just so... I, I, it, I just couldn't believe how this movie played out because I feel like the elements that are in here, like you were saying having Liv Tyler, having the problem with his father, you add that he has a kid, and then you can feel like the storyline is him making the same mistakes that his father did and then overcoming them. And that would be the, that would be the takeaway. But instead, you have the scene at the end of the movie where Liv Tyler meets him at like a, what, a bar or something? Yeah. And they just kind of like, he just kind of smiles for the first time in the movie and she kind of looks at him and, and then that's like it. And then I'm like, well, what the hell... What does that mean? Yeah, right. I, like I don't. What what is that? I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> well, no, that's their. That's the character development. She left him without saying a word at the beginning of the movie. Yes. She just slammed her keys down on the counter and left. Yes. And then she showed up and didn't say anything to him. So yep. that's the circle of life in the world of that <laughs> Astra. That's. That's all I got for now, Joes. I don't want to take any sure. more. Let's get okay. you started. I've Let's got plenty started. to say about it. Okay. I, I've been, so I should have let you go first. I, this is one of those I should have let you go first. So the audience sitting next to us was really old. And Annie and I kept noticing it. And normally we wouldn't think anything of it. But, there, but like older and older people kept coming in to the theater. And it was like tough not to notice it yeah. and like kind of like have a side discussion like what do you think is going on here are they all here to see tommy lee jones you know what <laughs> did we are we at the right movie i mean is this movie uh... night at the old folks home <laughs> um and so yeah because we're awful we find that that kind of humor funny um <laughs> but a little bit into the movie you see donald sutherland and yes. there was a small applause from this group. So I was just like, what the fuck? Are you kidding yeah, me? Are you Donald kidding me? Donald Sutherland groupies. I couldn't believe it. You gotta be kidding yeah, me. Yeah, they, really? they were so Donald happy Sutherland? to see Donald Sutherland. You've got to be kidding me. I have never heard yeah. that in my life. Are you kidding it, me? It, it, Donald Sutherland. It was like who, being in the episode of the Twilight for... Zone. <laughs> like, what the hell did we just who step into? Is... Donald Sutherland. Who applauds I mean, Donald Sutherland? Just him who, sticking who his face in that little room. I don't understand. I, I like <laughs> Donald, Donald Sutherland's a great actor. That's fine. Right. But like, he, he's not like it's not like he's Hollywood royalty. I like I don't I don't I don't understand. That's ridiculous. Oh my gosh. All right. Um, That's so weird. How can a movie? That's so bizarre. <laughs> how can a movie with knife fights, guns, space yes. piracy, and zombie space monkeys be so bloody boring? <laughs> how can you have all of those things and still bore people to death? <laughs> <laughs> Those, that, is, that is the blueprint for excitement, <laughs> and yet it's like. Everyone was on Ambient or something. Through <laughs> like, yeah, I deal. just just an evil space monkey eating people's oh, faces. Man. Uh, <laughs> no, no big deal. He was attacked by animals and he died on that ship. That's that's it. There's no survivors. There's no reason to go back. We're just assuming everyone else is dead. I didn't bother looking oh. anywhere else because you know. Evil floating space monkeys everywhere that eat off human faces. So eh. <laughs> maybe maybe that spaceship around Jupiter has survivors. Maybe it doesn't. You know, we never know. We never find out because he just gets the hell out of there. Yep, he just leaves. I I just <laughs> I love how you phrase that because it's so true. Yeah. it's another it's another time period where there's elements in this movie. That really could have been a better movie, and I just don't understand how this happened. It's just so boring. You know, um, there's no context given to anything. Uh, no. Brad Pitt is, like, zooming around through space, 
without a tether with amazing accuracy. I didn't understand that. He was flying yeah, was around weird. like Carrie Fisher in The Last Jedi. So it would make sense yep. if he had the Force, but I mean, when you've got nothing to push off of, you know, how was he just doing these elaborate spacewalks, like literally not even attached to anything in particular, just yep. willfully going wherever he needed to go? I mean, yeah, that would usually be the end of an astronaut. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things that I, while watching it, just... I took it as the suspension of disbelief, but it does happen a lot in this movie where you're just like, what? How is he doing this? I mean, there's other things, too, like, that they never discuss. Like, why does he need the feeding tube? There's probably a reason for that, but, but like, yeah. I don't understand why he did that, and, you know. No clue. And, it, and it's a scene that's done blatantly there where he reacts to it, and... It's, I, I don't know. I, I have no clue. I have no clue. And, like, so there would be these missile, mich, uh, sorry, these rocket launch sites, both on the moon and on Mars, that were yes. so far away from any of the space stations. But, like, why did he have to crawl through water holding a line, like, umbilical cord to get to that rocket? Like, that never gets I, explained. All, all it's all is explained is that woman sends him there tells him there's an underwater lake yeah and that's how he can get to the spaceship and that's it they they don't tell they don't address it it at all they just put that in there and you're like okay and which brings me to the other thing is you never know what the hell happens to her right yeah well, she, she one like, more he character like specifically, you don't know yeah what happens yeah it just doesn't like she he specifically tells her you are going, they're going to come after you. You know that, right? Me. And she's just like, yeah. She's like, accepts what she, the consequences. Yet you never see what the consequences are. You know, why, and why set up space pirates on the moon? If you're not going to have them have anything to do with the weapon being fired from Neptune. Or why it's suddenly getting directed at Earth. I mean, like, none of that is ever gone into in in detail. It's no. just it's it's just there, but then it's never. It's like a breadcrumb that is never yep. explored. It's never explored, and the thing that's so funny about that is that was probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Is is <laughs> You have these space pirates, which is just such a ridiculous scene, and you're like, what is going on? How How is there, like, this space piracy going on in the moon? And it's never addressed, but I love how that is felt. Because it's because the entire movie is filled as if, it's, as if, as if they're on the moon, because everything's really slow and in slow motion. This is the first time I've, like, seen anything like this before where you have people on lunar rovers right. and they're like firing <laughs> they're like firing these i don't even know what they i don't even know what they are they're like laser guns or something i don't know <laughs> and for them to have this reaction and have this like chase scene and to have it be like also slow because you're on the yeah. moon and having things blow up and kind of like fall off slowly cuz gravity is is not as strong it's so cool it's like such a cool scene <laughs> in this movie you have this really awesome scene and i'm like why isn't there more of that I don't know. just <laughs> well, just right, do a exactly. space pirate why movie do, is, is that, this do, the, kind do of the space pirate movie what the thing that's so funny is what i the other the other thing i was thinking about when i left this movie i was like okay there's space pirates on the moon why is it at that movie? I don't know. That's an awesome yeah, movie. And, what do you mean there's space pirates the on the space moon? Pirates, right? Yeah, that would be freaking awesome. What What is happening? <laughs> I don't understand. I don't what, like, that movie? Because you can't classify this as, well, I really wanted to make this movie because it's a character-driven piece. It isn't. Yeah. Like... It, well, no. Right? I mean... No, because the, pro the, problem, the problem with this movie is the main character is boring and uninteresting. 
if you're going to have a character driven piece, you need to have yeah. a character that you care about and you also need to have growth. There's not really any growth in this movie. He's like the same dull person from the beginning of the movie as he is at the end of the movie. And the I, and because it's fil- because it's done in such a weird way, I don't even understand what we were supposed to learn, which is what we've we've been talking about. So like if you're going to have a character driven piece, we need to know what, what's happening. And like, there's nothing there. You have nothing to, there's nothing. It's it's crazy. What I, what I really didn't get because it, and sometimes this is one of those things in movies that you just have to accept. But like, so he's going, he's on this ultra top secret mission so much so that they want him to look like he's traveling as a civilian and they don't want to tip their hat. To him. And then when yeah. it when it gets down to the nitty gritty, they don't even give him all the information that he needs. You know, like no. he comes in pieces from other characters, and then those characters are done. That's that's yes. it. The but the odd thing is, when, once you get to the very end of this, you start to wonder: Well, if Space Command had just shown Brad Pitt the video footage of his father saying that he killed everyone because they tried to leave and the mission is too important. It's more important than his, like basically in that video, he said F you to his family and to his son that there was going to be no coming back. I would think Brad Pitt would have had the motivation to just push the launch button himself on the nuke. So I, yep. I just I wonder why they kept that a secret from him when it when it seems like it wasn't like it, it was underwhelming when it came to light because we don't care about the character and he's not trying yep. and we think he's trying to save his his dad but if we liked the character more we would want to root for him to try to find a way to save his father. And his father wasn't acting crazy because of some alien thing that happened to him. The no. trailer was entirely misleading. Like, yeah. like it made it seem like it would have something to do with with aliens and, you know, a secret weapon that his dad was working yep. on. And it's really yep. none of that. No. Um, they, like, they actively lied about what was in this movie and that didn't show us a whole lot either and now we see why because it's just it's a very long movie where not a whole lot happens yes so anyway uh and i mentioned the asmr thing it's just one big snooze fest and i know annie fell asleep twice and i nodded (laughs) off once but i I stayed awake but it was hard yeah (laughs) Especially because you don't do caffeine in movie theaters. No, I I purposely so. avoid caffeine because it makes me go to the restroom. So I purposely yeah. avoid caffeine in movie theaters. I don't know. That's actually it out of me. I think I. Okay. All right. Well, you want to get into some likes? Sure. Okay. So I've already said that I thought the moon fight was easily the best scene in the movie. Because it's something I hadn't seen before, and it was really interesting, and I want to see more of. Now I want to see a movie filmed on the moon. Like, I want to, I want to see a movie that's set in the, at, on the moon with space pirates and have scenes like that happening. That's so cool. Like, I, like just give me an action movie like that. I'm totally okay with it. You can even put Brad Pitt back in there. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, the other thing I'd have to say is again I, I talked about this earlier where I thought the filming was creative and it was interesting it just makes it really difficult to watch this movie I, I they obviously purposely filmed it slow because the movie's slow and space is slow so like everything is slow and it's filmed that way so I kind of enjoyed that but it makes it really difficult to watch the movie so um, I enjoyed the filming aspect. I thought it was great, but it's rough. The only other thing I have to say is Brad Pitt did a really good job of playing a really boring character. And uh, I don't know if 
critics are talking about this movie in terms of like Brad Pitt doing a really good performance or not, but it's it's I mean he basically had to play somebody really boring, and he does it really well. So like he's he has a lot of scenes where he's very calm and collected. And you can kind of tell that he's like thinking things through without him saying anything, which is fine. And I think that's fine. And his performance is fine. But again, all of these aspects makes the film difficult to watch. So that's all I have. It's, you know, it's a snooze fest. Um, It is. I don't really... Uh, I thought the cleverest thing about the movie is that in the little crawl, the little text opening, they snuck in at the stars, right? For yeah, Ad Astra. Yeah, it's a two um, two of the stars. And then the, two and the stars. Okay. Yeah. And then it was downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's kind of clever. And then the rest of it is uh, Brad Pitt talking. It, not even on screen, really, but just talking a no. lot. No, there's, there's a lot of voiceover. Yeah, there's a lot of voiceover of him talking to himself. And there's even shots where there's other characters there, and he has a voiceover over that. So it, it's definitely Brad Pitt talking to himself the whole time. Which also reminds me of the, the freaking scene where... That I had got into where he climbs through, I guess, the thrusters yeah. and then gets and then gets into stowaways on this ship. And then everyone just like kind of miraculously dies in some weird freaking way right. because they're trying like, to stop him. Almost cartoon. It's like... <laughs> and yeah. and there's no, the weird thing about that is there's no, and I wasn't even going to say this because I was like, okay, I want to rag on a movie. But since you brought it up... Uh, <laughs> You know, there's no repercussions for the fact that he killed three people, basically. Yeah. I mean, right? I mean, they but, don't come back I mean, alive. They don't. The thing is, <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but the thing is, is because of how they died, he didn't kill any of them. Right. But, I mean, from <laughs> Space Command's point of view, it's like, well, he came on board and killed our three would be yes. assassins. But he he's even just, specifically like, there's no repercussions whatsoever, even though he no. didn't actually do it, and they came after no. him. But even, even the thing that he says, he specifically says he when he leaves the thing for Space Command, and he goes, "The rest of the crew are dead because of my actions," and that's how he says it. So it even sounds like he just killed a bunch right, of people. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm thirsty for blood, just like my father runs in the background. Yeah, I don't understand. And I'm just like, what is happening? And, and just so many things are just like, what is going on with this movie? <laughs> oh, man. I had so many little little tiny quirks that I chose not to talk about, but that was one of them. Yeah. The other one was the dang, the dang space monkeys who are, like, moving around in space really well, man. <laughs> Just, like, not a problem whatsoever moving around in space. Oh... Yeah. Oh, man. Let, let, well, let's just rate this damn movie. So, Ian is going to hate my rating of this one. Oh, but... <laughs> okay. Okay, so, here's the deal. I don't think that this is a bad movie. It's just not an enjoyable movie whatsoever. There's not much in here for you to latch on to. But I also don't think it's a bad movie. I think it's just really slow. So if you're if you want to watch one of the slowest movies on the planet, or apparently a Donald Sutherland fan, right? Yeah, even uh, though he's a, in it for Sutherland five groupie. minutes, they call themselves <laughs> so, the Donald. Then, or then I'm still <laughs> now they call themselves the Sutherland because that guy tainted. Yeah, right. <laughs> so unless you are those people. And even with me saying that, I still say you would rent it. But 
anyone else, oh, which boy. is ninety nine percent of the population, just skip it. There's no reason to watch this movie. It just isn't. Yeah, skip it. There is. <laughs> yeah, there's no reason to watch just this movie. Just skip it. Yep. Skip it good. <laughs> <laughs> that movie's rough, man. Ah, oh, man. I can't believe. I can't you believe. Gave it to rent it to Sutherland Group. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I, <laughs> I love how that's what makes you upset about this. Oh man, you know what's funny? They can buy it on what? VHS and play it in their VHS players. <laughs> VCRs. <laughs> One more thing that just came to my mind that I have to mention because Jackie. Mm -hmm. But I've had conversations with Jackie about Brad Pitt multiple times before. Okay. And Brad Pitt was obviously a sex symbol in the 90s. Yes. Like, he was always, like, huge. And the thing about Jackie is for the longest, she didn't get it. She had no idea why everybody thought Brad Pitt was super hot. But in this movie, she thought he was smoking hot in this movie. <laughs> and I'm wow. like, that's because, right? And I'm like, this is very telling about you because you, you prefer older men. And so there's this thing about him aging 20 years. Uh. Where now, you're, now you get it. Now you get it. You're like, oh, okay. This makes sense. <laughs> and I thought that was just so hilarious. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. No, and the funny part about that is, is while I was watching the movie, I was specifically stay saying in my head, I was like, Jackie, Jackie likes Brad Pitt in this movie. She thinks he's good looking in this movie. I'm 100% sure. And I kept saying that throughout this entire movie because you see his face a yeah. lot. And so I was just saying that over and over again in my head while watching this movie. And it, and it was, and it, I brought it up after the movie was over. And she was just like, damn, you're right. <laughs> yeah, she likes him now that he looks like Robert Redford in 1991. <laughs> right, I mean... It's so weird. It's like such a bizarre thing. But she like gets it now. I just thought it was so funny. Alright, Joes. Let's get out of okay. here. Let's, let's yeah, sign out. I gotta out. do let's... stuff. I got stuff to do. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. If anybody wants to contact us and talk about this movie, we have our home of the web at Half Past Podcast. Like us on Facebook. We're on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. We're on Stitcher, Lipson, and TuneIn. And if any one, any of the Sutherland groupies happen to be watching this yes. movie and want to really tell us off, you can have you can email us at halfpastcast at gmail dot com. Halfpastcast at gmail dot com. We're reading this all without having an outline, so tweet us, <laughs> tweet us at halfpastpodcast. I'm glad we have it memorized. Nice. <laughs> I had to do, we did this like emergency yeah. showing of this, which is why this one is pretty, pretty unorganized, but I think this was fun. I had a good it time. It is, I'm going to enjoy so, <laughs> making everyone I would listen enjoy, to it. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this one, so I'd like to thank everybody for listening, and thanks everybody for your support, and it's been, this has been a fun one, and I hope we get some more yeah, in here. Yeah, so. I think so. <laughs> So next one is probably going to be we're gonna try Abominable, right? I think so, yeah. The animated movie. So let's get that. Let's try to get that one done. I'm actually excited about that. Okay. One. I want to see that movie. It looks like it. It looks like it'll be a fun animated movie. Excellent. So it'll be good. Okay. All right. So Abominable's next, and uh, I guess this is Graham Ricks and Jonesy. See you next flick.